Hi, my name is Sanjay Mukhopadhyay. Today we are going to talk about the immunohistochemical marker GATA3. GATA3 is a great marker for breast carcinomas and urothelial carcinomas, but hopefully I can show you today that it's not completely specific for those tumors. First must know fact is that GATA3 is a nuclear marker. It's a transcription factor. It stains normal urothelium, breast epithelium, epidermis, and a subset of T lymphocytes. It's positive in breast carcinomas and urothelial carcinoma. So those are the big two for GATA3, breast and urothelium. Here's an example of a breast carcinoma that's metastatic to the lung. It's an adenocarcinoma and could potentially cause confusion with lung adeno, but it's strongly and diffusely positive for GATA3 and that's very helpful. Here's another kind of breast carcinoma metastatic to the lung. This one is more solid, but again, shows more uh, shows uh, diffuse and strong positivity for GATA3. Uh, one of the advantages of GATA3 over standard immunohistochemical markers of breast carcinoma like mammoglobin and GCDFP15 is that GATA3 is more sensitive for breast carcinoma than these markers. Now, when you compare GATA3 with mammoglobin, um, and you look at non-triple negative cancers, so those that are positive for ERPR, HER2, if you look at those cancers, for the non-triple negative cancers, GATA3 has 96% sensitivity versus 60 to 65% when it comes to mammoglobin. And if you look at triple negative cancers that are negative for ERPR and HER2, that's very difficult to tell whether they're coming from the breast, 70 to 80, 87% of those are positive for GATA3. So very, very helpful in that setting where all the other, uh, you know, the, the um, hormone receptor markers are negative, GATA3 can be helpful there. In those tumors, if you use mammoglobin, the yield is only 17%. So it's really, really very insensitive when it comes to triple negative cancers, um, whereas, whereas GATA3 is very sensitive for those cancers. Now, GATA3 stains 96% of urothelial carcinomas, so nearly all. And even if you look at high-grade carcinomas where you think that they would lose GATA3, actually the majority of them retain GATA3 and 80% of them are positive. Here's an example of a case uh, courtesy of Dr. DC Skipper Dio, it's Dan Skipper, uh, one of the most active re pathology residents on Twitter, um, gracefully agreed to share this case with me. This is a case of urothelial carcinoma that's metastatic to a lymph node. And you can see it's positive for CK7, negative for CK20, but what's really helpful is that it has strong and diffuse positivity for GATA3, and that supports the fact that this is a metastatic urothelial carcinoma to the, uh, uh, to the lymph nodes. Now, what you must remember is that it's not just breast and urothelium. There are many other tumors that stain for GATA3. The classic ones are paragangliomas, so 82% of paragangliomas stain for GATA3, and the other one is salivary duct carcinomas. Now, nearly all salivary duct carcinomas uh, stain for uh, GATA3. So that's one thing you must remember. You have to keep other tumors in mind before you jump to the conclusion that a GATA3 positive tumor is from the breast um, or urothelium. This can be a problem when you're looking at bladder uh, biopsies. So here's a case from the bladder a courtesy of uh, SAJ9039, also from Twitter. Thank you very much for letting me use uh, your picture. Uh, so this is actually a paraganglioma from the wall of the bladder, and it's strongly diffused the GATA3 positive. Now, if you didn't know that paragangliomas were GATA3 positive, you might, again, jump to the conclusion that this is urothelial carcinoma, but that's something to keep in mind. Uh, on the flip side, GATA3 is negative in most examples of adenocarcinoma of the lung, colon, prostate, ovary, and endometrium. Now the operative word here is most, meaning not all of these will be negative. Some of them can show positivity. For example, lung adenocarcinomas can sometimes be positive. In those examples, it, the, the positivity tends to be focal and weak, uh, but nevertheless, GATA3 can be positive. Now here's an example of a, a classic example of lung adenocarcinoma that is negative, completely negative for GATA3. So it can be helpful uh, because most cases uh, of these tumors are negative for GATA3. So when your um, differential is, for example, breast versus lung, uh, GATA3 can be very helpful. Now, when it comes to squamous cell carcinomas, 
we just talked about adenocarcinomas, but when, when it comes to squamous cell carcinomas, things get even more difficult because GATA3 can stain squamous cell carcinomas of various sites. For example, 81% of skin car uh, squamous cell carcinomas are GATA3 positive, 12% of squamous cell carcinomas of the lung, 16% of squamous cell carcinomas of the larynx, and 33% of uh, squamous cell carcinomas of the cervix are GATA3 positive. So the bottom line is, when you're trying to tell urothelial carcinoma versus squamous cell carcinoma or breast carcinoma versus squamous, GATA3 alone might not be able to solve the issue. So you should always keep that in mind that squamous cell carcinomas can potentially be positive for GATA3. The bottom line is, the take home message is that GATA3 is very sensitive for breast and urothelial carcinoma, much better than, than traditional markers like um, you know, uroplakin for urothelial or, or mammoglobin for breast, so very, very sensitive, but can stain many other tumors. In other words, it's not completely specific. Thank you for your attention. Bye-bye.